morning. Welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen. I'm Karen Griffiths. I'll be demonstrating the Whipping It Up products today. I have Simon on camera. Hello. We're back to normal, Simon. Doing a solo, me and you. I know. On our, on our Monday. So how's everyone had a nice weekend? It's been glorious weather, hasn't it? Well, most, most of them were, were, were with us on Saturday, weren't they? They with were, the, but... For we, the bouquet class. <laughs> we did, but we had, I had a lovely Sunday yesterday. I sat in the garden and had a nice rest yesterday in the garden. I let everybody else run round after me. <laughs> Made a nice change. So today I'm going to be showing you some different ways of the whipping it up. I know we've done it before, but I've seen a few comments over the weekend on the Facebook about certain recipes not going quite right. And so I thought I'd go through a few of the recipes with you. And the more we go through it, the more we get used to using it. As I say, so it's a new product. It's a multi-purpose product, so we can use it for plenty of things. We can use it for making mousse. We can do Swiss meringue buttercream. We can make uh, pavlovas, meringues, meringue kisses. Uh, we, um, well, what else have we been making with it, Simon? Biscuits. 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 It, it's great when you add it to the biscuits. It's uh, makes use the shortbread mixture. We've got the all the recipes are all on the website. Um, when you make the biscuits, they just got a lovely snap. You can taste the the the, the, the flavour of the whipping it up going through the biscuit. So, I'm going today, I'm going to make some, I think we'll start with the fluff today. We'll get the fluff going. So, just like to let me, know, let me know when the audience is built up nicely, please, Simon. Well, I haven't even started looking, you know. Was... So, I'm just going to get my bowl on the mix on or here ready. And I'll go through the flavours. The only flavour we haven't got available at the moment is the velvet vanilla. It's completely sold out and we'll be, we'll be ready again next week to be on sale and that will have our brand new Whipping It Up labels on. We can't wait for those to go on. The labels are absolutely gorgeous. So as soon as all the rest of the flavours sell out and we keep uh, remaking it, the new labels will be going on it. So the only one you can't buy at the moment is the velvet vanilla. We have lemon drizzle, we have Oops. salted caramel, we've got black cherry, raspberry ripple, and strawberry milkshake. They are all our top sellers. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I am gonna be making strawberry milkshake mousse. And I think we'll do raspberry ripple meringues. Yeah, good. And I'll probably do, um, in fact, because I want to color it as well. So I think I'm gonna do a black cherry uh, fluff, which I'll do into it, because I'll do a black cherry fluff and uh, we'll do a black cherry meringue as well because they'll go absolutely lovely. I'm gonna put these out of the way. I'll put them behind so you can still see them. You can see all the, the flavors that we've got. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Trish. Good morning, Nutty Elaine. Hello, Elaine. Nutty Elaine saying, Trish. what are you making? Have we not just said that? I don't know whether she said that before you. Yep. Before you said what we're making. Well, I'll go through it again. It's no problem. Um, and gonna... Sandra's watching from her car. Um, I hope she's not driving. I hope you're not driving, Sandra. We're making the lane. We're doing. I'm going to do a few things with the whipping it up. I just want to go through a few of the recipes again. You know, it was brand new, and we've got recipes on the website. Well, I still tweak my recipes when I've been uh, when I've been messing around at home. So I've tweaked the fluff recipe. So I want to show you. I mean, it's absolutely fine the way I did it. But I'm going to show you a new way to do it, and then you. It's your personal preference of whether you want to use the old recipe or the new recipe. Oh, Debbie, I'm not even going to comment on what Debbie said. More fluff. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe black cherry, going you put me all over a dither now. Gone all red faced, Debbie. <laughs> right. The stay in the fridge. I've covered it with cling film and I've put it in the fridge and it's still fine two weeks later. I'm just going to get a bowl out to show you. So I have, a, I have it covered in cling film in the fridge and this was the fluff that I made on the demo and it's still lovely and white and it actually has gone. When did you make that? 
this was about it was about a week and a half ago. It must oh. be a good week ago, and it's great. And this now you can put that into a piping bag, and you could pipe that into your um, any you 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 prepared chocolate shells, or if you want to make your tea cakes, or if you want to just do it onto a dessert. So it goes quite thick once it's been left in the fridge. So you know it could be an idea. Maybe make it one day, leave it in the fridge, and then pipe it the next day if you didn't want to pipe it straight away. The fluff is 125 grams of mixture. There we go. Oops, take that out. 125. So I've got 125 grams of whipping it up black cherry in the bowl. Now, as always, as we say, please make sure your bowl is completely grease-free and your beater and your whisk are completely grease-free. If you have any bit of grease on that, it won't form a meringue. I'm going to put in 40 mils of warm, tepid water, of tepid water. That's warm tepid water, it's warm, not, tepid, not cold not, tepid water. No, it's warm tepid water. I've just used warm water out of the kettle and then just topped it up with some cold water out of the, out of the tap. Let's get to my 40. There we go. So we're on 40 mils of tepid water. I'm going to put that into the... We've got Georgie Godbold watching. So Hi, that's, Georgie. We're all excited for her class, aren't Absolutely, we? Absolutely, can't wait. I'm just going to turn that onto a medium speed just to let it get going. And the great thing with this fluff is, and with the meringue and the mousse, you can actually colour it if you wanted to. Just throw my scissors on the floor there, Simon. Put those up there, out the way. Down, just for a moment just to get it going and then I will get my cream spatula just to make sure that all the loose powder has mixed into the liquid so bang it down just make sure all the loose liquids gone into all the loose powder has gone into the liquid Impressed 
I'm proud of you all who did the bouquet uh, class on Saturday with Carol. Your, your bouquets were stunning, your piping was amazing. All of you did a really good job and just so well done, it was amazing. now it's really getting stiff now I'm going to, I'm going to lift you up in a moment to see how stiff the peaks are and the stiffer you get these peaks now the more it will still have stability when you put in the um, golden syrup if it's too loose you put the golden syrup in you will have a very runny mixture so you have to get this first bit to be stiff peaks I'm not piping it into chocolate shells or anything today. I'm just actually showing you how to make the mix so that then you know how you can make the mix and you can do your own prepared shells. Just going to turn the mixer off now so you can see how stiff the peaks have gone. Make sure it's stopped. We're not doing what Carol did on Saturday when she tried to drown me in. Simon in Butler. <laughs> didn't she, Simon? She's shame for us, didn't she, Simon? Yes. Right, so that is not quite peaky enough yet, so I'm going to leave that mix in a little longer. I need them to stay there rather than falling over. High speed again. You just have to wait, we can't rush it, we have to get it correct. I am going to, I'm going to have a, a play as well. I'm going to have a play of trying to make some with, um, with some liqueur in it, like Bailey's or Tia Maria. I'm not too sure how the mix will go adding alcohol to it. So please feel free to have a play, but I'm going to have a play trying one with Bailey's and just trying to maybe, a, it's got a, definitely a, 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 a cure rather than um, a thing, I'm trying to think rather than uh, a very water basic whiskey. I'm, I just don't know how the alcohol will react with the meringue. I'm hoping very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you'd need, quite, to, you'd need to adjust for the, for the amount of, you'd well, have to take some water out, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I was thinking, though, like Bailey's, I mean, you can get, um, the pub measures usually 50ml, but you're only going to use 40ml in this whole mix. So I, I'm hoping if I could do it with a Bailey's, I would just put the full 40ml of Bailey's in and see how it goes. To, yeah, I think that'd be fine. Because Bailey's quite creamy anyway, so I want to make sure that it reacts with the, with the, with the old mix okay. That'd be great for Christmas, wouldn't they? Oh, imagine that. Why wait, why wait till Christmas? Christmas? Why wait till Christmas? <laughs> They'd be great for the evening. Yes. After, after dinner, wouldn't oh, they? Oh, absolutely. Right, that's better. So I'll just show you this on the overhead now. It's now got the stiff peak. Can you see that all right, Simon? It's now got the stiff peak that it's not falling. The peak has still formed and it's not falling. Any way I turn it, that peak is staying. So I now know this is the right consistency. So I can now add the one and a half tablespoons of golden syrup. So I've got a one tablespoon there, I've got a little spoon to scrape it out. Do a half a tablespoon. Just that one. Again, just. I mean, if you didn't want to do, if you weren't doing it with the tablespoon measures, you could measure twenty-two and a half grams of uh, golden syrup on your on your scales in one dish yeah. if you wanted to. So that's golden syrup, isn't it? Golden so syrup, it, yes. Um, maybe some of our overseas viewers don't know what that is. Corn syrup. Yeah, corn syrup in the uh, in the States is a equivalent of our, what our golden syrup is. 
So then just give this a really good blitz now for 32 minutes. And it's just making it go that bit thicker now so it holds its shape when it's inside your um, inside your inside your tea cakes. So when you took your tea cakes, it's not all gonna uh, run out. I'm just gonna give this a syrup, put a bit of syrup on the side of the bowl. sure all that is is into it all right can you repeat your recipe now the mix is off certainly oops a daisy it's 125 grams of any flavor of the whipping it up mix when, without banging spatulas <laughs> okay Simon. <laughs> it's 125 grams of any flavor of the whipping it up mix you want to use it's 40 mils of tepid water and then it's one and a half tablespoons or 22 and a half grams of golden syrup. Well, thank you. Or corn syrup if you're abroad. So with this, it's just going to whip up now for a further one to two minutes, just to make sure that the golden syrup is absolutely incorporated in all the mix. While that's mixed, I'm just going to get a bowl now that I can put it into because I'm not putting it into any chocolate shells or anything today. Let's just test that now. So for people who've had it fail, um, Carol's Brody's saying she's had it fail twice. If you had it fail twice, try this new recipe then, which is 125 grams of whipping it up mix, 40 mils of tepid water, and one and a half tablespoons, which is the equivalent of 22 and a half grams of golden syrup. But you need to add the golden syrup after, after. You've, after you've whipped it up. You have to really get your whipping it up mix and the 40 mils, you have to really whip that. It's a good five minutes until it's stiff peaks like I've just showed you. If you do it, if you don't do it to stiff peaks, it will fail and it will be running. I got it to really stiff peaks. Then I added the golden syrup and then I've whisked for a further two to, two to three minutes and look, that is still, now, that is really stiff peak. It's, go, it's going nowhere. You can tell with that, the curve there, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's just not drooping. So that is yeah. the correct consistency for your fluff. And people are saying we've got a smiley face in the blue bowl. Don't move it. I'll zoom in for them. <laughs> is it mine? <laughs> <laughs> is it me smiling at you? So I'm going to give that just... <laughs> oh, it's... <laughs> what its is... mouth is moving now. <laughs> spoon now can you see that all right Simon it's a nice thick nice and thick and that will pipe lovely into your tea cakes into your chocolate shells if you're making uh, the whipping it up whips I mean this uh, I've used a black cherry one here now and this will be lovely if you wanted to make the black cherry whips and then on the top you could put a lovely fresh black cherry that would be amazing I did those on the very first time when we launched it, you know, to, to show what we were doing with the whip. And there we have it. And that is your fluff. Now you can cover this in cling film and you can leave it in your fridge a good two weeks. I've left mine, mine's all right, but I'd, I'd say a good, a good two weeks. And then we, I do like to use it straight away and store your chocolates or your tea cakes in the fridge. The whip then goes more solid within the chocolates, but it just keeps so much better if you actually do to keep your chocolates in the fridge. The ones you buy from the supermarket have got so many preservatives in them that that's how they're made to be kept on, on, on the shelf. But because we're doing it fresh, then keep them in the, in the fridge, a little container in the fridge. They don't last long, I found that out in my house, they don't last that long in the container, but they just kept so much better if you keep them chilled. There we go. That have. Why they don't last long? You mean people eat them? Yeah. 
and you usually drop that song in this kitchen because Simon is a devil. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all me. As I said before, we've just used this machine now for doing the uh, whipping it up fluff. I want to make another whipping it up product you have to make sure your machine is totally clean you can't just think oh well i've made one lot of meringue i'll make another if it's got any other substance on it like if a bit of a syrup has touched anything it won't whip your other meringue up so you just have to make sure you give it just give it a, a good wipe down Nice clean machine now. Just wash my hands, there we go. And we've got another really clean bowl and really clean whisk. Put those on there. We'll make the mousse now, the whipping it up mousse, and I'm going to colour that one for you as well. I'll just move that away a moment while I just uh, measure. The whipping it up mousse, it is on the website, which is uh, the mixing it up. It's on the back of here, but we just read it out again. It's uh, you can find it by doing the www.sugarandcrumbsmixingitup.co.uk and you can go forward slash whipping it up and it will bring all your whipping it up or just if you write in the recipes whipping it up it will bring all your recipes up for you that, in, that we use the whipping it up for the mousse is 150 grams of whipping it up mixture it's 80 mils of tepid water and it's 300 mils of double cream now i'm going to use two bowls i'm going to have one for the cream and one for the whipping it up if you've only got one bowl at home, you could do your cream first and put that into a bowl and then wash your bowl out thoroughly, your mixing bowl, wash your whisk thoroughly, make sure there's no cream or residue on it and then do your meringue. I want to do a nice strawberry milkshake. And this, this is so light and fluffy. It's a perfect dessert for after, if you've had quite a heavy meal, it's a lovely light dessert if you just want to treat your friends and you feel like you do want to have a dessert on the table. It's beautiful, so light. Just measuring 150 grams of whipping it up. A bit too much there, let's get a spoon. And all these bags for the whipping up are resealable and they're also all 100% recyclable. They can go in your plastics recyclable bin. They have been made especially to make sure they were 100% recyclable. Get the mixer back over here. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's answering questions. Oh yeah, thank you. On the on the, uh, on the, on the, <clears throat> on the comments because I'm not able to see every question. It's a really big help when you do that for me. Thank you. We do try and answer anything we can later on if we have missed anything, as it is only me and Simon in the kitchen. It's hard because Simon's doing yeah. the camera work and it's also. And if I miss to... something on the camera work, you yeah. can't go back really. No, can we you, can't. So... so we can't really miss it. 80 ml of tepid water and putting that into the bowl. And again, I'm going to start this on a medium speed. So we get going and then I'll uh, scrape down again. I have another 
twin spatula. You must make sure, I know I keep saying it, but you really must make sure all your equipment equipment is grease free. I think that's what we found sometimes. It is usually if you've got a little bit of grease on your on your equipment, that's why it hasn't been working. I'm just going to scrape down the bits of powder around the side. Just make sure everything is incorporated into the liquid. Yes, that's that. what I do all yeah. the whole time, yeah, just <laughs> mix it up. Yeah. As you can see now, it is definitely starting to thicken up. Again, this has to be to stiff peaks. Because once we've mixed the cream, the cream is mixed in a different bowl, and then we fold it in so that we're still keeping the air within the mousse, so the mousse is really nice, light and airy. I've got my taller piping bag, you can use piping bag. I'm going to use a 1M to pipe it into the, the display glass I've got. So I've folded that right down. You've got to be so careful with these 1Ms that the, the, uh, the, the tips there don't pierce your bag, otherwise you end up with spaghetti coming out all over. I'll just give that a snip. I'm going to fill the back in just to guide it through the hole and there we go. So that's now waiting for the mousse. That's whisking up really nice. I'm just going to get the cream so I've got the cream on the board ready for you. Over so that we could whisk the cream up. 
as I said, if you've only got the one bowl at home, if you haven't got two bowls, which I haven't got two bowls at home, I you just whisk one of the products first, I put it into a spare plastic bowl, and then thoroughly rinse out the bowl and the, the whisk. I make sure I give it in warm soapy water, give it a really good rinse, dry it, and then I'll do the next part. in there now. What we'll do, I'll colour this, whipping it up the uh, strawberry milkshake, I'm going to colour this pink and then fold the cream into it and it'll all become pink. Not quite there yet. Now this is great if you're having a, a, if you're having dinner or if you're doing a special occasion. I'm going to pipe it into some martini glasses, just because I think it looks that little bit more that, that little bit more sophisticated posh. <laughs> Rather than doing it into a bowl, I'm going to do two nice serving glasses and just think how well how lovely that will look at a special occasion. Especially if you're doing around Christmas or you're doing for birthdays or little romantic dinners, how nice it looks. I will decorate it up and show you how it looks when it's all decorated as well. Perfect as an after show snack. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I think Simon's wanting mousse now. I'm just going to show you this. It's nearly there. It's not moving. I'm just going to give that another minute. But well, it is stiff peak, it's not moving. Even when I shake it, it's not moving. So really we are there, but I just, I just like to give it that extra, you can't over whip it. That's one thing with the whipping it up, it doesn't over whip. I'll give that a good, good full speed whisk. one side as you can see it really is stiff peaks they're not going anywhere can you see that on the overhead there simon or are you, are you in the front it was on the overhead we're now on yeah. the front so you can tell even when i shake it it's not going anywhere that peak it is stiff so I'll give that not the ex not the excess off and i'm just going to put this to one side a moment Because I'm whipping cream, I, I don't really need to clean the machine thoroughly, but I like to make sure it's clean anyway. And then we'll put the bowl on. We'll tip the 300ml of cream. Is that a full tub? It is a full tub, 300ml. So I've tipped all the 300ml of cream into the bowl. I've got my other clean whisk. Now try not to overbeat your cream. You have to be really careful and don't overbeat it. If you do absolutely overbeat your cream, as long as you've got a little bit of cream left in your fridge, you can bring it back by just adding more cream, and that will bring it back to all of the consistency again. What happens after you? What happens when you go too far? If it goes too far, it just goes into one big lump, and it's it's uh, it's it's not your double cream. It, it, you can ruin it and, and just over whisk double cream. And if they carry on whisking double cream, you actually separate it and you can have buttermilk in one bit and butter in the next. You actually can make butter from double cream. Um, Valerie's saying she's lost sound, but I think somebody else would have said if they've lost sound. So nobody else has lost sound, that's nobody fine. Nobody else has said they've lost sound. If you've lost sound... Uh, oh, she can hear us now. Oh, <laughs> oh she can't hear us. Just try and refresh your page and see whether that helps or not. Remember, if she can't hear you, you saying that doesn't help. Yeah, somebody else type that for her. <laughs> 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 yeah, I forgot. We're not doing lip reading, are we? Hopefully, one of our nice, our nice uh, sugar and crumbs people will let her know. Yeah, other people do. can hear. You, so. Oh, I never coloured. I never coloured my uh, thing, I'll, I'll colour it while I'm, we'll do it the old fashioned way, we'll colour it while we're doing it. 
As you see, the cream's starting to whip up nicely now. and then just fold it all in together. Ashley's asking, what is the whipping it up range supposed to be? Is it mousse, cake cream or buttercream? It's all of those things, isn't it's it? It's not buttercream. Oh, it's not buttercream, It's not no. buttercream. I'm, I'm the other day with my cream Well, now. apart from Swiss meringue buttercream. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Swiss meringue buttercream. You can make Swiss meringue buttercream with the whipping it up. You can make mousse with the whipping it up. You can make pavlovas and meringues with the whipping it up. And you can also use it in a biscuit recipe. It's all on the website. It's a multi-use. A product so it's not just making one thing you can actually make quite a few things from it all the recipes and you and especially our whipping it up fluff that everyone's going mad for which they're putting in their chocolate tea to chocolate tea cakes and chocolate shells to make whipping it up world all the recipes are on the website for you to have a look at uh, the recipes are on the whipping on the mixing it up page every bag of whipping it up and every bag of icing sugar comes along with the address on the bottom for you to find it. If you just go into Sugar and Crumbs, you can see the recipes from the Sugar and Crumbs website. We have a separate little uh, tab on the top saying recipes. Once you're in recipes, go into the search bar there and put whipping it up and it will bring all the recipes to you. Got the cream now. So the cream's a lovely strawberry milkshake colour. I've just used a bit of, I've just used a bit of pink in with the strawberry milkshake flavoured whipping cream. In fact, this is this is just normal cream. There's me. So I have two bowls now. So this is what you will end up with. You'll end up with a bowl with cream in and a bowl with a bowl with cream in and a bowl with whipping it up in. Again, a nice clean spatula, and we're just going to fold the cream into the whipping it up. I'm going to put it in. You can put it all in at once because you don't want to over you don't want to overfold it because you're keeping all the bubbles, all the nice aerated bubbles in this. Just a case of just fold it in. As you can see, it all starts to come nice and pink. It's just a case of really carefully. Just fold it in, divide and fold. So you're mixing all the whipping it up into the cream. You see when I do that with the spatula, you see all the air bubbles, you see those Simon? All the air mm. bubbles. I'll zoom in, see if I can see them. Oh yeah, go on. That's how nice and light it is. That is why you're just folding it all the time. Don't mix it. If you mix it, you will take all the air bubbles out. And that's what makes mousse so light and airy, is all the air bubbles. Just scrape down the sides. to make sure that the whipping it up is all covered. It doesn't matter if you've got some white whipping it up left there. It's, well, I just like it because it's strawberry milk. I just wanted to make sure it was all a nice light pink. 
So there we have it, it's all mixed in. Now I'm going to actually not use that, so I want to use a bigger bag because I'm going to do it all into one. For the mousse and the meringue that you really travel over, it probably is better to use a bigger bag so you're doing it all in one. If you're making the meringues, I would only half fill your bag uh, as once it gets warm, it doesn't hold its peaks as much. So if it's uh, if it's like the meringues, if you're making the meringue kisses, just fill your bag halfway, then carry on piping and then use the rest of the mixture. Don't try and put all the mix in at once, especially for the meringue kisses and your little meringues. glasses. I'm just going to do a nice pattern within these. This mixture actually does four really nice uh, servings of mousse. I've probably got a little bit more there because I'm trying to show you the effect of what it looks like in the glass. nice strawberries just give them a fan effect you just cut up near the stem could you pull them towards yourself and yeah. show the overhead certainly you all like that is that oh, all right the glasses oh, the... can you see the strawberry all right yeah all i'm doing there is i'm just fanning it i'm just cutting the strawberry up near the top stem and then i'm just fanning it out like that and because it's a martini glass and we think like we're having a bit of a cocktail there, we'll get one of these PME striped chocolate cigarellos and there we go. So what do you think of that chocolate mousse and how's it, how's it uh, displayed like that? Can you see that alright Simon? Yep. Yeah. Could you hold it to, let's try and get this camera. Move this so out the way. Zoom in with that. You're right there? Yeah. As you see, it holds its shape nice in the glass. Okay. It's very aerated. It's not tipping out. And that is a really nice, light dessert to serve after if you had quite a heavy dinner. That's that one done. The best store in the fridge, but I will put them back in the fridge in a moment. What I'm going to show you now is we've Carol's had this um, nozzle on the website for quite some time, but we've never used it, so I've been having a bit of a play. So I'm going to do it again today. Remember, it's only my second time of using the nozzle. It's the gem, it's the twister. Let me get the full packet one. Do you know when you lose something? Here it is. You put it down. It's the gem. It's the twist nozzles. They come in two sizes. You have the large one and the medium one. Now that one has done the large, and these ones, and it leaves a little bit of a hole in. Now these are going to be great if you wanted to do them on the side of a cake, if you was doing a drip cake and you wanted some... Do you want to hold one of the nozzles up to the overhead yeah, which so, one? We, so we can move it around so we can actually see what it is? Yes, certainly. Do you want to do it on that blackboard? That no, it doesn't always? matter. Just are you alright? Yeah. Just move it around so you can actually see how, how it's... And I'll show the underneath. So that creates the hole and then your meringue or your you can actually you can actually pipe the biscuit um, 
there's, I was, there was like if you do a looser biscuit mix, you know, like your Beanie's biscuits, you can actually pipe biscuits and it keeps a hole in, in the centre. So you can pipe biscuits, you could do buttercream, you can do meringues. Can you see that? Can you? Sh yeah. But very sharp, very sharp points there, which is where the meringue comes out. And then that is just, that hole there is just, what creates that hole. Again, with the small one. Oh. Sorry. With the small one. It is the same shape as the big one, but it's just... Um, you see the points? And that creates that hole there. Now these have cracked a little bit in the in the oven. They were they were they were cracking as they were cooking. I think it's a case of don't worry about it. They taste absolutely lovely. I think these were these strawberry milkshake, raspberry ripple ones, and they taste lovely. Add a bit of character. You can dust them. As, as I said, you can stick them round. You can stick them around the side of your cakes. You can use them on top of cupcakes if you wanted to. Uh, you could put them on top of a cupcake. You could tie, you could pipe a little bit of cream in the centre, put a bit of fruit on the top or a bit of decoration. It's just different ways of using them. But I'm going to show you how to do these without whipping it up because this has all been made with the whipping it up product. Here we go. Give everything a wipe down again. Let me just clean my cloth out because it's got whipping it up on it. I just want to make sure. I want to make sure again that the mixer is completely clean as we're making the meringue. So I want to make sure there is no mousse mixture around there or no cream because we've had we've been making double cream so just make sure it's all wiped out a lot of people wipe all their equipment down with a bit of lemon juice that's all nice and clean now there's nothing left on that got my clean tea towel here that just gives it a is what I do for shining it up again. I just like to make sure that it's nice and clean and nice and dry so nothing is going to ruin the meringue. I've got my clean bowl. And I'm going to do 250 grams of whipping it up. Do you know what? What are you making here? Karen? These are meringues. These are good meringues with using the, um, oh, the right, gem okay. twist nozzles. So we're making these. That's what you're making then. Yeah, okay. these lovely shaped. I mustn't have been paying attention. <laughs> <to it>. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all looked at those. <laughs> we're making these lovely shaped meringues now that you can use in desserts. You can use them on cupcakes. You can use them to decorate the sides of your cake. You can even put them on a drip cake. But I'm also. Once that's mixed, I'm going to make some of those, but I'm also going to then going to put some in a small piping bag and show you how to do the little meringue kisses to do on your drip cakes that you can, when they're cooked and they're, they're cooled, you can put them in a bag with a bit of dusting colour, shape your bag up, and or you can colour then your meringue kisses. Two hundred and fifty grams of I've got a lemon drizzle, whipping it up. Here we go, 48, 49.50. 250 grams of whipping it up. Again, like I said, these bags are resealable and they're also 100% recyclable. 
So the vanilla will be in later this week? No, the vanilla's going to be next week. Next week. And it's going to have, the vanilla one will be, will be the first flavour that has our brand new whipping it up label on it and they're so beautiful. That onto the mixer. And it's 100 mils of tepid water. Still room temperature, that's fine. So the nozzles are called um, twist, gem twist. Gem twist nozzles. Gem twist. I'm not sure why they're called twist. Did you, have you tried twisting them? No, because it comes out like a twist. It makes it makes your meringue look like a twist when it comes out. You don't twist them, you keep them still. The nozzle does all the work. Pour your tepid water into there. Oops, I've not got a clean. I've gone through them. Then we're set the sign. I've got my clean whisk here. Again, just start it off. Just, just on a medium speed, just to get the uh, whipping it up incorporated into the liquid. Try and tidy up a bit. Knock it down, just turn it up a little bit higher. spatula and then just make sure that there's no loose liquid bit loose powder around knock it all into the liquid and then we'll turn this up to a high speed I've got two baking trays So yeah, look, Chris, Chris is asking about the, the, the calculation of water in the various recipes, but they're all on the Whipping It Up website, aren't they? They are, yes. What is it? Uh, I think the, the Whipping It Up fluff, that has 40 mils of liquid, the mousse has 80 mils of liquid, and the meringue has 100 mils of liquid. But well, there's different amounts of powder in the beach. There's different amounts of powder. So you, the, all the recipes are all on the Whipping It Up website. On the on the recipe bit, you put go to the recipes, right the pin it up, and will, all the recipes will come up. So again, because it's quite sharp, roll down your bag as far as it will go. Put this, hold it very carefully because you don't want to pierce the bag. And it's going to slip off just below the um, the peaks, the sharp the sharp peaks of the nozzle. So when I push it up now, you can the see plate, you can see that the bag is a bit skewed, but it's all the peaks are showing. So leave that down, and I will show you. That, I will show you that the whipping up colour is fine. I'm going to colour this one a nice light lemon colour. I'm going to turn the oven on to 100 degrees. And 
as you can see it's starting to form it's going stiff now so this is going to take just a couple more minutes to get to the very stiff bits that i've been showing you all morning you need grease proof paper and you just cut to the size of your baking tray so nutty your lanes asking how many does it make but if she just waits a few minutes well, well yeah it makes you see i'm making out this one mix now i'm going to make a few different things oh ah, okay um i can show you bear with me a second So I'm going to give that just another couple of minutes, just an extra couple of minutes whisk. I'd just like to know that it's really at its optimus best then. There we go. Oh, oh my finger trapped in that one. I tried to whisk my finger then, Simon. So just a, just a couple more minutes, that's all it's going to be. I'll just put my nozzle in my other bag. Again. Very carefully, because they're very sharp. The, the nozzle is very sharp on the edges. Just 
just below the uh, sharp edges is what you're going to snip and just gently push it off your finger there we go so I'm just going to colour this now I'm going to colour it into a nice lemon colour turn the speed down This is sunflower, I love this sunflower colour. Just want to go a little bit deeper. I will scrape down the edges of the bowl to get all the white meringue off. Gonna give that another good mix. Just got everything off the side of the bowl there. So there's a little bit here. I'm just gonna. I've just dabbed a little tiny bit, so it's just holding my grease proof paper down nicely. You don't need a lot. It's only a little bit. Just stops it flying around when you're piping in a moment. Lovely, lovely light lemon. Now, I don't want to go too dark, it's summery. I want to make it a lovely light lemon. And one thing is, you can really smell the flavours in these. You can taste them, lovely, you can really smell the lemon coming through. Is lovely that's going nowhere you can see are we on the front there Simon? on the front at the moment but yeah. i'll show it on the overhead so you can see it's absolutely going nowhere it's stiff peaks and that is just what we wanted into my piping bag squeeze it down as you can see you start to squeeze it comes through i just go just above can you see that all right there simon there um can you, you move the bowl so i can show from the side yes certainly move that out of the way for a moment we're all right there now yeah it depends where you're going on that board though. i'm gonna go there right okay we're we all right there yeah here we go so you squeeze and it comes out and it twists itself and then in and then off you have to sort of go in a little bit and come off. Don't it's don't be gentle. So you squeeze just off the paper, then you see your twist start to form. Go in, off. Go. Oops, a daisy. That one. That, that one danced. Get them done as quickly as I can, as it starts to lose its pit. It's very warm in here, isn't it, Simon? Yeah, 
hand, the less you can handle it, the better. So pipe out onto the board. You see it starts to... What do I do with that one now? Burnt. See that? I managed to get one more out. Pipe onto the board, in and out. Now it takes practice, as you've seen, it takes me some practice, but you are left with these little holes. That's a very small one. <laughs> You're left with these holes that you can decorate or you could fill with anything that you wanted. I'm gonna fill the other piping bag up so you can see the, um, the, little, the little nozzle. Those to one side a moment. So if you didn't want the hole, could you just do the, the, the bit higher up? Would that work? Have you tried that? The hole doesn't. Yeah, it, <laughs> if you actually put it onto the board, that if you put the whole hole onto the board, it fills up. It doesn't. Uh, I, I've, I've I've had some without holes. I've had some right. with bits of peaks on. It is trial. It is trial and error. But this one is designed, this gem twist one here, is designed to have the hole in the centre. But you can get round that, I did. I want to show you this one. And I want to show you some meringue, meringue kisses as well. So Ashley was asking about making macarons. I think we are going to do those. Yes, Laura's going to do them next week, isn't she? I think Laura's going to be making macarons. She's just trying it out at the moment. So we're just the recipe, we're just uh, Laura's trying it out. So that will be a live coming. This small one, move this bowl please, Simon. Can you see that all right there? That's fine. If I stay yeah. like that. Squeeze it out. I'm not touching the board, I am now. You see it start to twist and then just bring out. So you can see it start to twist. You see that when I put off the board, it's onto the mat now, I'm squeezing. I can see it start to twist and I just come up. Once you see it start to curve the twist, you bring the nozzle up and that's what leaves the hole behind. And as the, as the meringue gets warmer in your hands, your holes actually start, you, you've got to be careful because your hole starts to disappear. So if you didn't want a hole, you could just, uh, what you could do is just do that. Just smooch the meringue over the top. Smooch. There you go. And you've got some without holes in there if you wanted to. Can you see those all right there, Simon? Yeah. Because when the meringue gets warm, it won't hold its shape. It's really warm in here today. Done those ones there. I'm going to show you some meringue kisses now out of the same mixture because it's great for when you're doing your drip cakes or you want to decorate uh, any desserts up. Oh, I can do it on that same board there. Doing the, I like doing my meringue kisses, my meringue kisses with the little, uh, with the one M. So I'm going Viv, Viv Goddard says, squeeze, dip, pull. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. There's lots of other one M to just screw them in on the floor. Right, put that one for wash. Right, I've got my clean one end here. Again, I'm just putting it straight down to the bag. I've already cut this one already. So I've got my one M. So these nozzles come as a set, don't they? Yes, you get the two in the set. They're great, when I saw some videos before, they're great, you can, as I said, do your buttercream with them, you can make biscuits with them. Um, it's great for meringue. So these are available on the website? They are on the now? website, yep. Yeah. I've just got one end in my small piping bag here. And that's how I like to do my meringue kisses. 
just make sure it's clean at the end there we go and I'm just going to go down and just do just do small stars and that's how I like my meringue kisses now Carol likes Carol does um drop ones as well but I was doing these I did these on my daughter's cake like this and I quite like the effect and these again when they're cooked and they've gone cold you can pop them into a, a clear a, into a bag and uh, cover them any uh, you can dust them with any dust you want so if you did the white ones you can dust them any color you want i did some white ones and i dusted them in a rose gold and they were really effective and out of a 250 gram mix you will get loads so if you only wanted to make around kisses i'd do 125 i just have your recipe and do 125 grams they keep in an airtight container for three to four weeks So you've got some nice little meringue kisses there. If you wanted to, you could make some, make some bigger ones. If you wanted to, a showstopper on the top. In the middle of there. And I'm just going to put those into the oven now. Just bear with me. So how long are those going in for? These go in the oven for around about. 45 to 50 minutes on 100 degrees C but do check them uh, once you find that they can lift off with a palette knife very easy and the bottom is cooked as I've shown you that you've got that nice shell on the bottom then you do know that your meringues are cooked if they're gooey if it lifts off and you've got goo there just leave them a bit longer till you get that nice shell then just turn your oven off and just forget about them till the oven's gone cold and it doesn't matter that you've got big ones and little ones on the same no, tray. And... No. So are you? Leave, did you say you to leave them in the oven? Leave them in the oven. To, once once they've cooked, you just turn your oven off and you just leave it until it's gone cold. And they're absolutely fine then. And if you're doing a big pavlova, you could. So you would... yeah, let's uh, for, Forty to forty-five minutes. Check them, and if you don't think they're quite right, leave them another five ten minutes. Each oven's different, remember. Each oven is, is each each oven is different. So just check them after 40, 45 minutes. If you find your meringue kisses are cooked, just put them onto the baking sheet and uh, just bring those out and leave your other meringues cooking. But then turn it off and just leave them to go cold in there. Big pavlovas are the best. If you do a pavlova or the big meringue shells, you're best to cook those. When they're cooked, turn the oven off leave it leave it till it's gone completely cold if you bring the pavlovas out too quickly they crack it's because of the difference in air temperature that we're cooling it down too fast so you have to wait for it to cool naturally within the oven as the oven's going cold so i hope you've enjoyed that today we've made some gorgeous strawberry milkshake mousse we've made plenty of meringues just put these ones over here as well and I've got a few I don't want to show it in the bowl it's not very nice is it in the bowl <laughs> in the bowl there I've got plenty of these and yes some some do look like they've cracked more than others but I would still use them I think it just adds character to it uh, I'm going to see what these other ones look like when they come out now because it's on the 100 degrees but I checked it and as soon as it started to cook they went like that so, I, so it's just a case of trial and error and as I said I'm still practicing with this nozzle this is the second time I've used the nozzle I was quite proud of myself and actually got some holes just bear with me a second um, the nozzle you used for the kisses was that a 1M? it was a 1M yes that yeah. was one and you can use them um... well done Cathy thank you for, for that you can if you want to you can use the 1M um, you, can use a, you can use a 2D, you can use the, uh, the nozzle with the hole like the, like the uh, big number 10 or what's that one? You've got a number 12, we've got a number 12. If you've got big ones like that you could use, do the brown kisses with, the, with a hole one. And if you didn't have any nozzles you could probably just chop the end of the bag off. Absolutely, you can do that as well. If you've got no nozzles like that just, just chop the end of the bag off like Simon said and just do some, some drops and you've got your teardrops coming out as brown kisses. My fluff, that's what I was looking for. I thought I'd lost my fluff then, Simon. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so, put the biscuits there, we've got meringues. Right. And we've got fluff. The fluff is lovely and sturdy. That's... 
you can see it's lovely that it's not going anywhere that will fill your fill chocolate mouth. shells and you will fill your mouth it'll fill your chocolate shells it'll fill your tea cakes you can actually spread it on the biscuits you can make s'mores with it and if you want to do a s'mores rather than melting a marshmallow get you can get two chocolate biscuits and spread that between it and you've got the american equivalent of a s'mores dessert okay so thank you for joining us i hope you've enjoyed that carol's back on at eight o'clock tonight so are we giving a prize today for this yes if you can like and share uh it will be uh, it'll be some whipping it up be, i imagine it will be some whipping it up um it, it, it'd be really good if you could like and share for me please as many times as you can and then we can the prizes will be drawn again on friday morning i'm back friday morning carol's here tonight at eight o'clock so please don't forget to tune in to see carol at eight o'clock i think it's ronnie and rachel is it i'm sure it's ronnie and rachel tonight it's something you won't want to miss so please join us at eight o'clock and thank you so much for joining us here thank you simon for your excellent camera work as usual Thank you, and Karen. Do, yes, it's been delightful, hasn't and it, And doing today? your comments as well. And thank you to everybody who's helped by answering questions yes, as well thank on you there. to everybody, because it, it's not easy to... And I do miss some questions. No, so it, if, you have, if you haven't had your question answered, I'm sure we'll get Carol or it, Karen yeah. will, will answer the question and get back to it. Yeah. We will, and it's greatly appreciated the people who have helped. So thank you for joining us, and I'll see you again. I'll see you here Friday morning at 11.30. Bye. Bye.